Today I'm gonna build the perfect $10,000 watch collection with $10,000. You set a pretty high bar there for yourself. Yeah, perfect uh, collection. yeah the perfect watch collection for $10,000. There's rules, of course. You always put these f***ing rules. So it needs to be at least five watches, if I remember. It needs to be one watch from each brand, right? Yeah, you right? have more than one per brand. I can't have three Casios or something. Can't, unfortunately. Well, I mean, to be fair, you could have three Casios if you want. No, no, you can't. 10K here. Listen, but that would be unfair. We need to play this right. So I can only be 10 10% above and 10% below 10,000. So I could do it for 9,000 if I want to, but we're not gonna do that <laughs> for sure. Before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel now, you know the drill. And if you wanna spend your $10,000, go to brightandpinion.com. Or if you wanna sell your watch, go to brightandpinion.com. Let's get stuck in the collection. What I wanna do this time is completely different than what we've done previously. I actually wanna buy one big boy watch and build other watches around it. So that's the idea. The others are always kind of five watches around around equal prices. In this case, I could buy, say, five watches for $2,000. But instead of me buying five $2,000 watches, I'm gonna buy one big boy watch and I'm gonna build some other watches around that. It needs to be an all-round watch collection, right? It needs to be a dress watch, a diver or sports watch, chronograph, because I love chronographs, and it needs to be all several different brands. So that's what we're gonna do. By the way, can I buy pre-owned, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Where do I start? Big fan of chronographs, big fan of divers. My first choice is gonna be a chronograph. A Longines Navigation Big Eye. One of my most favorite chronographs ever produced. The watch with an incredible story, to be fair, because this watch is based on a vintage watch which Longines received from a customer to service, and they never knew about the existence of that watch. I think it's an absolutely beautiful watch in every way possible. The size of the watch is also perfect, 41 millimeter, and next to that, it comes on a leather strap, basically killing two birds with one stone here, because you can use it as a dress watch, and you can use it as a cool chronograph. I really, really love that watch. I think the retail price of this watch is about $3,800, but pre-owned, you can get them a very, very good one between $2,200 and $2,600. So let's put $2,600 on the counter. We've spent already with one watch, a quarter of our budget. So I wanted to have a big boy watch and I wanted to build a collection around it, but now I've already spent over a quarter of our budget. <laughs> So I'm not sure what's going on. You need to rethink your strategy. Yeah, I need to rethink my strategy, but this one has to be included, fact. I love the direction Longines is heading, like it's just class. <laughs> Watch number two. I'm going towards a different, a little bit of a different direction, but I really, really think a Tech Heuer Carrera Caliber 5 Day Date should be in that collection. In the beginning of my career as a watch dealer, it's a watch that I always enjoyed selling because I really loved the bracelet. I really loved the dial. There's a blue dial and a black dial of this watch. Maybe if I'm correct in saying there's also a white dial, but I've never ever seen that watch. The blue dial is my absolute favorite, and it is a watch that features a day date. An open case back so you can also see the movement which is quite fun of course and the size is quite perfect as well 41 millimeter i really love that watch i love the durability of the watch the only downside of that watch for me is that is a tech, that is tech no no <laughs> the only downside for me about this watch is that the glass isn't sapphire if i'm correct it scratches like a mother f that is my only downside of that watch but other than that i don't know what the retail price of that watch is but i think you can buy it online pre-owned in around the fourteen fifteen hundred dollars and if you want a really good version about sixteen hundred dollars love that watch what was that sixteen hundred dollars say sixteen hundred dollars will be fair how much are we on forty two hundred dollars what would we buy shall i just go big boy route and then i still have that 10 percent to play with maybe that's not the right approach because i really want to include one of my favorite divers pound for pound ever the zodiac super sea wolf pound for pound best diver on the market today incredible bracelet incredible case incredible dial i really love that watch yes coincidentally we are a zodiac dealer but that completely separate i want to be an authorized dealer from the brands i really love and that exact watch makes me wet i'm not gonna lie well you can get several versions of the Zodiac Sea Wolf, including the Super Sea Wolf and the Sea Wolf 53. In this case, I would like to go into the direction of the Super Sea Wolf, the one that has the cost certification. You buy the watch in at about 1,700 pounds new, which is how much in dollars? 2158. 2158 on the counter today. So we bought three watches from three different brands. We bought Longines, Tech Heuer, and we bought Zodiac. So how much did we spend? 6,350. 
58 dollars that's not bad i can buy another watch at three thousand dollars and then i can buy a six hundred dollar watch we always need a hardcore watch in our collection a watch that you can use while being in the garden while f digging up some f corpse that you just killed the night before you need a watch that can withstand it all that can handle it all and of course that's a g-shock in this case so i would put 150 dollars for the g-shock g2100 series say 140 dollars not sure what the exact price point is in dollars but 140 dollars that needs to be included fact and that allows me to go into three and a half thousand dollar mark maximum price three thousand six hundred i'll just no, say between three, four and a half, just to make sure I don't miss any opportunity there. And there's absolutely f nothing. 6,000 watches in total for sale. I really wanted the, like a proper high end big boy f brand like Jeje Le Coult, but it doesn't seem to be possible there. No, not the high to low, you mark. Low to high. Rolex is not possible. We can't do it. We, can, we just can't. We have three and a half thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Rolex is just not possible. You can buy a Chiellini for two thousand dollars, but then you're that buying absolute dog shit. It's very, very important. Never buy the cheapest Rolex on the market because it will always give you problems. Always. You don't want that. Service cost is, will be done nearly half the price of the watch. Don't do that. Right, you need skinny wrists for this. Average man can wear it, I can't wear this. A Vashon Constantine Patanomi, right, in solid gold. You can buy that watch for three and a half thousand pounds. The only problem with that watch is, it's small, 34 mil. I'm building its perfect collection for me, not for someone else. So I can't choose it, but I want to choose it. If I had small wrist, I would definitely go into that direction, but unfortunately I have fat wrist and I'm a fat f so I can't do that. So we need to, we need to look further. The good thing about Grand Seiko is that the most expensive watch looks very, very similar and gives you the same vibe as the cheapest watch. But that is with Grand Seiko. Like, I mean, I was just looking at a watch there. It said 80 grand, but if you would say it would be five grand, I would believe it as well. Credits where credits are due, 100%. Grand Seiko makes most definitely the most beautiful dials in the world. I don't really feel the vibe with Grand Seiko. I've never felt that. Watches on Wonders has completely confirmed that with me. Grand Seiko has no idea what direction to go. They're completely lost. I don't think that they're watches in any way shape or form is spectacular but i need to have a dress watch and it could potentially be a grand seiko if i look at this but i do believe that at a lower end the four thousand dollar three and a half two and a half thousand dollars that's where grand seiko is a proper value proposition so that could be a good option but you know what i'm just looking at it i just don't want to be associated it says nothing to me it's soulless grand seiko is soulless <laughs> Johnny, I think we're on a winner. Yeah. I think we found it. I think we have a winner. This is from a brand you would have never expected me to choose from. We're going to be a little bit over budget, like a few hundred dollars. That's all right. A watch brand that was founded in 1988, and that's a year after I was born, and I remember it well. It was founded by a Dutch couple. The name Frederik Constant is a really up name because it's got nothing to do with the watch brand or the person that started it because the couple that started it was called Peter and I think something with Alex the name Alex so Super no that's no f that let me be completely straight here right Frederic Constant has basically been an homage brand for Patek Philippe for many years they basically copied everything what Patek Philippe done design wise copied it just made a sh watch that looked like an expensive watch i didn't like that strategy i don't like that strategy and to be honest you were able to get a frederic constant at any airport anywhere in the world for f buttons i think the value proposition at the time of frederic constant was horrendous but listen mistakes in the past we'll leave that in the past the brand is actually doing some good stuff started to make movements in house starting to make their own designs they're investing a lot in their own people and in their own infrastructure and i really really like that one of the first watches i always really really wanted was the world timer it was the frederic constant world timer this is one of the reasons why i'm obsessed with the world timer but i never got one i never bought one the world timer has been in production for many many years but I think that that is the watch I would like to include that would finish the collection in one go. A watch that you can use while traveling and see the time all over the world and wear it as a hybrid with a dress watch as well. The Frederic Constant World Time. A watch that, by the way, new cost in around the $4,000, $4,142. But I think you can pick them pre owned, average in about two and a half to $3,000. I personally would buy a new one in this case because Frederic Constant is not really well known for their reliability. So I would always want to buy that with the warranty. So, 
my 10k collection today contains a watch you can use while traveling and see the time all over the world in one glance which is a world timer and a watch you can use as a dress watch the Frédéric Constant world timer a Longines big eye a watch with an incredible story but also a beautiful chronograph on the leather strap which you can use as a chronograph as a sports watch but also as a dress watch I like it the Tech Heuer Carrera Calibre 5 that watch is also a hybrid I think because I don't know which category I need to place it in I just like the watch number four pound for pound the best dive watch value for money on the market today a zodiac a brand with an incredible story and an incredible future and of course the indestructible god tier g-shock that's a great collection so we've spent ten thousand six hundred and ninety eight dollars and i actually think that this is a near perfect watch collection what do you think how does your perfect watch collection look like which watches do i need to scrap and which watches do i need to replace can i go home daddy